Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we are back in Space Engineers on a planet, of course, since they've had the recent update. And we're going to go over a new line of ships we've been working on related to planet usage and basically how de your designs may evolve through different steps. Now we actually have four models of our dropship here. Unfortunately, the Mark II model was uh, abandoned basically because planets came out the same day we were working on it, and it basically turned out to be a complete rubbish design for it. So we didn't even bother to save the Mark II variant. But we have four models here. Two of them are the Mark IV variants. And we'll go from one by one and show you the different designs and how they've changed. Now, this was actually originally using a number of different mods here for the Mark I. Let's go ahead and get the HUD off there. The idea was that you would use the uh, rotor-controlled thrusters for vertical takeoff and for forward acceleration using hydrogen thrusters. Unfortunately, the fuel consumption was a bit too much for that. Now, we'll probably revisit that concept later on and maybe see if we can get a much faster atmosphere of craft for it or even just a um, orbital craft basically we can use outside in space, of course. Now, the premise of the dropship is that it is... Well, for troop for crew for transport, basically, with light armaments. Now, this particular one did not have any armaments on it. The second one was basically the same design. We dropped our thruster T-bar here down by two blocks, moved our seats slightly forward, and added a Gatling gun to either side of the cockpit. Now, moving on to the uh, Mark III design here, we came up with a much more streamlined design here. You can see the wings are a bit... or sorry, the T-bar, rather, is a bit further out. Uh, that pretty much accommodates our dual solar panels here. It's completely battery operated, while the previous version was retaining a reactor, as well as a large cargo container. This only has a small cargo container for its dual Gatlings. Uh, it's got manually reloaded... Well, actually, sorry, not on this model. We took the missile launcher off of this one that was on the uh, Mark IV, rather. So, again, it's still retaining the four-man seat. This is completely mod-free, this version here. And what we have is, it's got four gyroscopes on it. We've got these T-bars that end in three large atmospheric thrusters for elevation, of course. And there's a total of nine forward thrusters. Now, this model has no descending thruster, as you'll notice. And what you see there from the tail is there's actually a line of heavy armor that goes through. It actually elevates up one row here and then ends at the back of the cockpit. So what that is, it's basically there. It stretches to the T-bar as well. It gets to give it some structural integrity. Uh, a bit more robust, so it won't break apart when hitting a heavy landing, or basically when you get crash landings or shot down. You're less likely to have the entire thing snap apart, rather than just taking damage to, say, one of the T-bar thrusters. Now, we've only got the uh, two reverse thrusters as well. So what we have with this one here is its primary motivation for movement comes from its uh, vertical thrusters, which of course with the gyroscopes you can pitch down and you can pretty much roll with it perfectly fine. Uh, I've been doing some navigations throughout the mountainside here, haven't had any crashes with it yet. It works pretty good. It's got a total of four batteries on it and the two solar panels. The four batteries should last it throughout the night, depending on how long your nights are set for, of course. Now, next we have the final version, which is the Mark IV prototype. This retains the two Gatling guns. We have increased our forward, or sorry, our reverse thrusters by four, added the missile launcher on the front, which you'll have to manually reload. And then, of course, uh, it still has the four batteries, but we've increased the uh, thrusters overall, reduced the solar panel, and you'll notice the T-bar has been reduced in width. It is much smaller profile here on the Mark IV. We've also added two descending thrusters, a couple more spotlights of course, uh, changed the design here on the thruster housing basically, and I think it looks a lot better than the design on the Mark III, which is a bit, well, blockish, which obviously the game is going to be blockish. Alright, so then we doubled our primary forward thrust, so we've got a total of 17, counting the one in the tail there. And of course, both of these, the Mark IV and the Mark III, have four landing gears on it. We've experimented with using the um, 
space balls, and that didn't seem to really work out too well for landing, and then of course since you couldn't lock it, it just made more sense to use the landers. Now one point I did forget to mention there was that we also, on the Mark III, dropped the connector down to the bottom, while it was originally on the top of the Marks I and II, which again, not shown here. Now originally the design for it was that you would use a crane on your ship to basically grab it on the top, pick it up, move it over, and store it, and then way you can move them off and on the flight deck as needed. But of course, as we're streamlining the profile, we cut that down so that we have a nice connector in the dead center and all those four little landing gears throughout the craft. Now, over here is the Mark IV B, which this is just foregone the actual transport option for it and just added on four Gatling guns on either side and then of course the one nose gun. So it's basically just designed for uh, air support combat support and whatnot on it. Of course, we'll come up with better designs for combat ships as we go forward, especially with atmospheric and, well, out of atmosphere fighting as well. Uh, we're definitely going to need something that can do both. It'll be probably a bit larger than this ship is. But what we end up with is basically a similar design, so you could uh, use a blueprint to um, basically just paste this over a damaged or even just strip down the sides of a existing Mark IV-A and just modify it to have the gun emplacements that you want to use, of course. Uh, the gun has the same maneuverability as the Mark III, except for it's a bit faster on the forward acceleration, a bit better on the braking, and again, your, your primary thrust is still coming from your vertical acceleration of the Mark IVs. So what you're going to want to do is basically tilt it down and fly it like a helicopter and you'll get around pretty good. Now, it has a remarkable difference in just having those two vertical thrusters, two descending thrusters there, and your ability to control it and pretty much maneuver. It, it, it's a drastic difference. I definitely recommend playing around with both types and just seeing how completely different they react to each other. You have a lot more control with the Mark IVs with the vertical thrusters than you do with the Mark III. And it's so much so that I was tempted to put them on the Mark III, but I wanted to save that for the second half of the video here, which basically we're discussing uh, design evolution. Now, again, we are still missing the one step, but all that was was just dropping down the T-bar and moving the seats forward and adding two guns onto it. So we're not really missing too much. But what we see here is each one of these is a, another attempt at the same design. Now this obviously doesn't have any heavy armor core in it. It's a very basic concept. We have a VTOL T-bar thruster up there. We've got uh, batteries and there's four total in here. There's a large reactor back there. And there is a hydrogen tank in there as well as oxygen tank all this all the basic stuff you'll need for survival and usage with the hydrogen primary thrusters and of course you have your navigational ion thrusters here now after that we just dropped the t-bar down we added a couple of defensive weapons because there's no reason not to really put a gun on most anything especially since one gun is not going to make it a pure combat craft it's still going to retain its utility as a transport or a construction or mining vessel whatever it is you're making and still give it some defensive capability if it is attacked now after that obviously we had a huge design change we went with a much more streamlined and what we did with this is we actually built a carriage on our station block here since we were building it in atmosphere and built it from the top down so we started with this core section here Actually, we started with the uh, heavy bar that's about two layers under that top part there. And then we added the core section on top. We did our wings, which we did ten block spaces out in either direction. Then we went back and did our tails. We had our wings, or our T-bar wings, rather, and then our tail. And then we started to build the body down under that. And then the bottom platform forward. So we had the general idea from the previous models, what we wanted to go with. And we just kind of streamlined it and just made it look a lot more aerodynamic. It's a bit wider because of the T-bar. And more so because we had trouble with the new thrusters. The atmospheric thrusters were just a pain. We couldn't get them to fit in our design here. Uh, we had a, another hydrogen thruster prototype that was basically two hydrogen thrusters in one house. And it looked pretty good. 
and we'll probably use that later in another design, but we just couldn't get the eye on, or it's not the eye on, but the atmosphere thrusters to look that good in uh, housing designs. So we ended up going with fully exposed here, and I think it looked pretty decent. Uh, the solar panels were actually tacked on at the last second as an afterthought, thinking, you know, well, how are we going to charge us out in the field if we don't have a reactor on board and uranium's going to be hard to find to begin with, even if we put a small reactor on there. And, of course, having a connector on the bottom was also part of the solution, but at the same time, it didn't really provide us enough of a solution, because that means we'd have to dock constantly to keep this thing fully charged, considering how much power it actually uses and what it can store with just four batteries. So, of course, then we moved on to the next one, and the redesign for this was purely based on reducing the T-bar profile. I felt the T-bars ended up being way too long, but also I needed to keep solar power, so we just cut the T-bar down, and then originally we had it tacked on top, doing the similar platform as you see right here, but it didn't look nice hanging over the edges, so we went ahead and cut out the middle section there through our solar panel, and we sloped it up a bit to make it look a bit better, added on the extra lights, and of course all the extra thrusters as well, which the last part we added on there was the descending thrusters. And that turned out to be the best innovation for this design here, not just for the size reduction, but those descending thrusters make a significant difference in how it handles. Now they're not required for atmospheric craft, of course, but they really make a huge difference for how it handles it. Again, I definitely recommend you guys check them out. I'll put these up on the workshop and then play with them, play with them a bit, and you'll see a huge difference in how that it handles. Now, the last one, of course, is just because we always like to make our gunships since we're kind of helicopter-oriented here. Uh, basically, we just stripped off the seats. Uh, originally, I was just thinking maybe putting four or six on either side and then trying to retain the seat, but it didn't really work out that well, so we just armor encased the batteries and then just threw the guns on there. Now, we could probably get away with adding another two if we just cut that section down there. Have a total of six on either side, but I felt that would be a little bit excessive, not so much as a weapon, just it would look weird with the craft design having it that far recessed. But that pretty much covers it. That's uh, what we've come up with. Well, these two variants have, or sorry, these three variants here have been for our work today. Uh, that's what we've been working on recently altogether was the dropship design. We haven't put any paint on any of these, so we will go ahead and see about painting some of them up and getting them on the workshop for you guys to look at, hopefully later today. And, um, well, just let me know what you guys think about it. Give them a try, see if they're any good for you, and see what recommendations you have. Uh, hopefully you'll find something inspirational for your own designs as well. And of course, as always, have a good day.